Uh, yep. not, not the reservoir. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then the second one is this: Would this be? Um, is this another one of those instances where we're um, sort of offsetting the budget for the water utility, or is Cor this coming out of the DPW? No, budget? we're offsetting the the oh, cost from, from the water. For water. Utility. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we'd be reducing debt in the utility. We wouldn't be taking Correct. on additional. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, similar to what we did with their other projects for this year, then, Doug. Okay. Yeah, that was one of my concerns. Is that that's that's a water utility relief, if you will. Um, I technical question. It, it is so. This system is located there because it is there a reason why it's it's there as opposed to somewhere else like the main. Yeah, because this is where all the information is collected because of the elevation of it. And this, this so you got tower a also, there. yeah, we have a repeater there. And so um, that is the location where everything can communicate to. Okay. Yeah. And, and we don't have, I think maybe you did mention it, we, ha we have a portable generator there now or we don't have a generator backup? Uh, we don't. We do have a portable. Uh, and so we... Uh, bring that up. We also have a, a backup system just for the communications. Uh, but the booster station up there uh, with the large pumps and stuff, we do not have backup power supply for that. And so when we do have a power outage, then we're uh, left with just the water that's in the tank. So if, we, if it's a longer power outage, you know, those tanks will draw down and we do have a, a risk of um, running. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like a valuable project to me. I, so we're going to rate this and then. We would. Uh, Marianne will email you out a scoring sheet and then we'll make our decision on May 9th if that works. Okay. Any additional questions? I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So item four is discussion and possible action to approve starting wage increases and promotions at the beginning of the pay period. I think this also came to us from the HR committee um, with the. Um, uh, switch over to uh, Workday. It seems like these adjustments are easier tracked um, if they take effect at the beginning of the pay period. Um, does anyone have questions on that for Marianne? If not, is there a motion to approve that item? Motion from Dinny, second from Martins. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, Item number five is discussion and possible action to classify the newly created fleet analyst position that was approved in the 2023 budget. Um, that also comes to us from HR. Does anyone have questions on that item? If not, is there a motion to approve that classification? Motion from Dinny. Is there a second? Second from Lukens. Questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item six is discussion and possible action on production agreement between the Wassa School District Board of Education and Administration and the City of Wassa. Um, this is an agreement to televise their meetings, it sounds like. Does anyone have questions on that? If not, is there a motion to approve? Motion by Lucan, second by Watson. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, item seven is discussion and possible action regarding budget modification quest request to reallocate 2022 CIP funds for the police department. Um, and it looks like they're looking to repurpose some money that they'd had for fencing because the fencing bids were um, extremely expensive and they've identified a need that they could fulfill sooner. Um, let me switch to that in the packet. And yep, and we have the deputy chief here if you have questions for him on that project at all. This is easier done on paper when you have to toggle between. Okay, here we go. And so you have a um, memo from Deputy Chief Barnes in the packets um, that would um, convert some of their office space to more efficiently use it within the confines of their building. Um, and then they would then put off the fencing request for a little bit, if that makes sense. If there's not additional questions, is there a motion to approve that shift? Motion from Watson, is there a second? Second from Dinny. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries as well. Um, item number eight is discussion and possible action authorizing the write off of certain uncollectible delinquent personal property tax accounts from the city's accounting records. This is an annual event for us. If we write these off, though, um, the legal department does continue to try to collect them. So, um, 
they're, they're not complete forgiveness. They do continue to pursue them. Um, does anyone have questions on this process at all? If not, is there a motion to approve the write-off? Motion from Watson, second by Martins. Go I ahead, Doug. I do have a question. I, it, yep. it seemed like there were some f fairly prominent names on there. They're not all businesses that are out of business. Um, is, is that a function of what, what, what's cause, what causes that? I, I guess I don't understand how it, how it doesn't get collected from like the Dudley Tower, for example. And it, and it may be a small amount, but it's in there. If I read that right, I, I don't. I'd have to find it right now. I don't see that one either. I'm looking for it too. So the the process obviously is we submit um, tax bills in December. It's real estate, personal property. The state statutes indicate that the city has a window after uh, personal property becomes delinquent, if they are out of business or bankrupt, that we can ask the school and the county and the technical college for their share of that bad debt back, because we've already paid and settled on the personal property with them. So just like the county pays us in full for real estate, delinquent real estate taxes, we pay uh, everyone for their share of delinquent PP. There is, as I said, in the statutes, uh, the opportunity for us to bill back just for those that are out of business or bankrupt. And so really that's this chargeback, the 15719 uh, then uh, collection occurs on these parcels and on the other um, tax bills from the city attorney's office through a variety of collection efforts. And then if uh, we collect from these that are out of business, uh, we then pay the schools, the technical college and the county back their share. Okay, okay, it, so I see this column, then you have the out of business yep. versus pending, pending yes. court action is where that First Wausau Tower, yeah. Dudley. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that may not be the Dudley Tower. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Um, so we had a motion and a second on the floor then to um, authorize the write off. Uh, members in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, item number nine is discussion and possible action on tourism entity agreement between the City of Wausau, the Room Tax Commission, and the Wausau Central Wisconsin Convention and Visitors Bureau Incorporated. Um, this is a renewal of our um, agreement that we've had in place since um, the new leadership took place over at the Visitors Bureau. Um, this would be a renewal of that arrangement. Uh, we, as I understand it, we are inviting the director of the Visitors Bureau to the May 9th Council meeting to present to the Council about their results and the things they've achieved since they began. Um, they've done some retooling on the website and things, um, as we understand. So um, the entire Council would get that presentation so we can all hear it together um, versus to bring the director in just to the committee. So, um, but the terms of this contract are no different. Um, our, the Room Tax Commission recommended that we renew it for another year. Um, again, take stock of how things are going, and then if we want a longer term going forward, um, we would talk about that at the next renewal. Um, and I think the room tax minutes were in the packets. Does anyone have any questions on that at all? If not, um, is there a motion to approve the agreement? Motion from Martins, is there a second? Second by Denny. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries as well. Um, item number 10 is discussion and possible action on a budget modification for the 48th Avenue sewer interceptor replacement project. Um, you've got a memo in your packets on that as well. Um, does anyone have any questions on that project? We'll bring Eric up to highlight the points of his memo. Yeah, I tried to um, put as much detail in the memo as, as, I, as I can. Um, this, uh, this project is uh, 
quite complicated actually because we are dealing with three different railroads uh, we're dealing with two separate power companies um, and the design on this has been going on for over two years uh, to get coordination and so uh, as we moved into it from the original estimate um, the railroads have required us to move the line which has you know resulted us in having additional costs they've required us to use different materials um, and then now we have to pay for moving electrical uh, and supporting other uh, high line uh, transmission lines with other power companies. Uh, we're still working on getting the permits, but um, I think we're kind of, you know, at the last couple yards to get in the end zone on this one. Uh, we bid the project. Um, we sat down with the contractor to see if there was any additional risks we could try to mitigate for him. Um, and a lot of the costs, almost $100,000, is just working with the railroads uh, for their inspectors who have to be on site during the project. So, okay. Um, okay. Does anyone have questions on that at all? Um, if not, is there a motion then to approve um, that budget modification to true up the cost with the project? Motion from Lukens. Is there a second? Second by Watson. Questions? Can I? Go ahead, Sarah. Is there a resolution in the packet on that? Yeah, it should be at, for it's the at end. the it's the very end of that packet. Oh, okay. It wasn't by the memo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Additional questions? Seeing none. Members in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. None are opposed. Uh, that motion carries. Uh, discussion and item number 11 is discussion and possible action on a budget modification for the Riverside Environmental Remediation Project. Um, you've got the memo in your packets on that. That's the um, cost to um, remove and remediate soils at Riverside Park. Uh, we've been waiting quite a while to get this going, but does anyone have questions for Eric on that at all? And this is proposed to be funded from the Environmental, environmental Fund, right? So, um, anybody have questions on that, Sarah? Um, I was just wondering how much is left after this would be taken out. Oh, I just looked at that the other day. There's over a million dollars left, about 1.2 million, I would guess, after yeah. this. And that's not, that's the one that can't, is not replenished. Right? Correct. Okay. okay, right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there a motion then to approve the um, project at Riverside? Motion from Watson. Is there a second? Second from Dinny. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That item carries. Um, item number 12 is discussion and possible action on closing the McClellan Street ramp beginning on June 1st of 2023. Um, you've got the um, information from the report from, it looks like, Walker Parking. Um, every year they've been taking a look at that ramp. Um, it's in, past the end of its life, but they've been taking a look to make sure that it's um, at least maintained and safe to use until we can get to a certain point. It sounds like those... Uh, reports are coming in with some substantial expenses needed to keep that structure going. Um, the no cost option for us as far as the investment to make in the structure is to close it uh, and then relocate the parkers and the permit holders to other facilities. Um, and uh, we've got Alan and Eric if you've got questions for him on that. I guess do you want to walk us through your dial your discussion with Walker and what they found in the ramp specifically? <clears throat> Sure. It, you know, the ramps were uh, constructed in like 1976, so they're approaching their 50-year life. Um, we've been doing routine maintenance um, ever since I, I, ever since their inception, I guess, but it's like on a three-year cycle. Um, recently, we had them evaluate again the condition of the ramps. We had it done last year. We had it done this year because there's concerns with falling concrete and the kind of the excessive deterioration. And our last conversation with Walker. Um, you know, their recommendation was to close it just because of the, the deterioration. Um, there's uh, failing concrete, there's um, deteriorated waterproofing, there's joints that are bad, there's a sewer that's bad, the storm sewer drains are bad. I mean, you, you have the costs in here that's uh, laid out. There's also shoring that would need to be done. Because of the excessive deterioration in the beams and the columns, we would have to do some shoring to keep the structure safe. So those costs um, are in there too. So we'd recommend closing it this year to incur any of those costs. So we don't incur any of those costs. 
sounds like there's ample space left at Jefferson Street to move those parkers over from um, the one ramp to the other. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we're in like the 30% occupancy at range Jefferson? in Jefferson and even lower in some of the other ramps. So we do feel fortunate in that we can um, relocate the parkers without, you know, any big change in convenience. Does that then also cause the removal of the skywalk from the city square office center? So that would come down with? Yes, the city owns the walkway. Right, across? Across second, so that would, when the, the ramp would come down, that would include the demolition of the walkway. Okay, and then some restoration on the facade of that building where the walkway connected, or? Right, we would have to, right, we would have to Those fill in. The doors have to be removed and We would everything. have to fill in the void where that walkway comes down, correct? Sure, okay. Michael? Yep. Um, I guess, if, speaking of, you know, I've got a couple questions, but the first one, yeah, speaking of walkways, uh, in the um, Dudley Tower developers agreement, we, aren't we supposed to provide a walkway to that ramp? Uh, would that, we would have to amend that agreement then, or? There is a commitment from the city in that agreement that says a skywalk would be placed from the McClellan ramp over to the Dudley Tower. Um, no decision was ever made to do that but um, at this point there was um, just a little history on that too was the city did look at um, some schematics about uh, putting up a standalone um, tower next to or connected to the McClellan ramp so that if the ramp ever did come down um, that that tower would still stand along with the skywalk um, and that was looked at because of that the 120 Scott Street, which is that vacant lot just to the south of McClellan Ramp right now, um, that there was a proposal for a building to go in there at the time, and then that tower would kind of be a, a connection between the two. Um, but that never came to fruition, and so the, and right now that just the ramp is deteriorating fast. So um, just for safety and other reasons, and uh, the amount of money it would take you know, just to get uh, another few months out of it doesn't seem. And I know a year or so ago, we also put a, quite an investment into um, energy efficient lighting for that ramp. Yep. So would we be able to um, uh, reclaim or reuse uh, those light fixtures in another area? For sure, we'll reclaim those before it comes down. Uh, reuse right now, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to work with our electricians to find out if there's locations for mm -hmm. reuse on those. Okay. Any additional? Go ahead, Doug. <clears throat> Thank you. So if if we pull the plug on this and we don't put in any more maintenance into it, how long do we have before we it, it becomes unsafe that we, uh, I mean, we're going to have to have a quick timeline to tear this down, I would assume. You're talking 24 or yeah, we're, sooner? Yeah, we would propose to budget in 24 to take it down in early 2024, probably February, March timeline. Right. Additional questions? If not, um, we have a motion and a second on that no. one, didn't we? We did not. Um, so is there then um, a motion um, to move forward with the closure of the McClellan Street ramp? Motion from Watson. Is there a second? Second from Martins. Further discussion? Seeing none. Sure, I, I, do, oh, have, go ahead. I do have to back to what Mike had said. Uh, so there was an agreement with with the Dudley Tower there, what, how does how, what what does that do then? I mean, does it change the future there? Do, are we going to be obligated to put another ramp in at some point, or what? What is what does it do to that agreement? And I don't. Maybe I didn't hear what the city, answer was to that, but I. I the city attorney's not here. I I think there were. Oh, she is here. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see you back there. <laughs> hate to say this publicly, but we've been in breach of that for some time and will probably remain so because we never put the connecting sky ramp to the McClellan ramp to the tower or to the existing Dudley Tower. It's not super clear in the agreement. We just revisited that recently about when it needed to be done, but there were some language there was some language in there that it was to be done contemporaneously or something with the construction of the Dudley Tower, which that's been a long time. So 
I don't know that it would be worth. I probably wouldn't recommend trying to go back and amend the development agreement now. I'm not sure they would agree to that. Well, it would seem not prudent to put a ramp, put a skywalk to a non-existent ramp, but uh, that was the struggle we had when there was an ask for the stair tower, was that you'd be building new infrastructure to support infrastructure that was near death. And so I think that's why we had a difficult time even deciding on that when there was a structure that was proposed for the Scott Street side. Right. Does that answer your question? You. That answers my All question, right. and it brings up one more, if I may. Sure. Um, so what are we going to do with the property? What what is our in, what do we envision there? Is is parking, or are we going to RFP that? Do, do we have any sense of what we might want to do there? So to the north of the ramp across McClellan Street, there's a is a gravel lot right now uh, in the 24 budget we would propose to um, pave that uh, and create parking there on that space um, currently where the McClellan ramp is once it is uh, demolished it would just uh, probably go back to green space at this point um, for and discussions like any other vacant property for potential development in the in the area With that, um, we have a, a motion and a second on the floor to move forward on closure. Um, additional questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item 13 is discussion and possible action regarding a budget modification for professional services for grant writing. Did you want to walk us through that one, Marion? I didn't see packet materials on that one. Oh, in right. here, I got to the end of unless I have to resync. I got to the end and it I didn't see in materials. My either. I synced right before. It wasn't there. It's not. A it is not there. Okay. Oh, I wrote a resolution on it. I don't know what happened to it. It's in the council packet. It's in the council okay. packet. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, my apologies. Um, I think you know as we sat down as um, staff and looked at all of the funds that will be coming down. Um, through the federal government in the near future, you know, it's going to require some investment on our part to actually respond to those. Many of them have short turnaround and, you know, you want your uh, application to be competitive with all the others and there just isn't, um, you know, the, staff's, the staff resources to respond to those types of requests. So this would give us some funding that we could reach out to engineering firms or, you know, the appropriate expertise uh, so to help us respond to those applications, get them done, get them done well so that we can uh, be competitive and actually s secure some of these grants. Uh, and so the proposal is to take that out of uh, carryover dollars and if we don't use them, they would just stay in the general fund. Okay. Um, I know that we had talked about at one point how great it would be to even have a staff person whose specialty it was um, to seek out and apply for grants that knew enough about everybody's operations and departments to successfully do that. But it takes an awful long time um, to first pay that, well, to cultivate that skill set, and then you have the ongoing overhead of paying such a person. So um, we did have some success with... Um, professional grant writing when we applied for grant dollars to um, reroute Highway 52 and close McClellan Street um, when the Y expansion happened um, to get the lights in there and get the traffic signals that were very expensive. Um, we had some help with that and it was welcome. Um, anybody have questions for Marianne on the possibility of engaging the appropriate professionals when grant opportunities exist? Sarah. I guess I just wanted to say that I, I appreciate that this is in here because I think this is something the city really needs. Um, but the 110,000, um, so that's a carryover from last year's surplus? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, is so it's not something that we could look into funding continually, like maybe in the next mm. budget cycle? Um, or Because I think it's something that, I mean, it's going to have to happen every year, I would assume. Sure. Right? I, I, I guess we looked at it as with the ARPA money, this is kind of an unusual situation where we're having more grants available to us than we have in the past. Um, you know, I think it will provide 
good information about our success rate in our applications and to see you know how many other grants will be out there in the future so you know that's something we could certainly look at i don't know that we necessarily have to make a decision on it today but i think it'd I think be interesting to see point. how much of it you actually use and then mm -hmm. if it's something that needs to be recapitalized because mm -hmm. we've had success with it i think then it's an easy decision to make if we know that you know they reel in a couple of these opportunities with this funding doug yeah, okay, I guess that's where I was going with it. Do we have some sort of a a matrix that we will be able to t tell if it's, I mean, ideally it should pay for itself. Right, right, and, agreed. And, you know, or more. We, <laughs> well, yeah, um, to spend money just to make make life easier on this and get the same money isn't really fruitful, but hopefully we're looking at that. Sure. All right, um, is there a motion to approve um, that allocation? Motion from Watson? Second from Lukens. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion also carries. We made it through the entire agenda with a little time to spare. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion from Dinny, second by Lukens. Members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll stand adjourned and Common Council will start in this chamber then at 6.30. Thanks everyone. <laughs>